if there's no difference, price becomes a big deal. If I get the exact same thing from this person as I get from that person, well then, you know, golly, give me the... I mean, no, no, I just like to pay more because I like to. No one's going to do that, right? But it's only a part of the equation because it's this piece, service, what we do before and after the sale, and the way that we do it. The attitude that we bring and the image that we bring, that goes back to the slogan comment, right, that we made this morning. That's what drives value in a market. But if we don't have that, if we don't have that, quite frankly, price wins. I will submit to you, my personal observation is, we're going to talk about them a little bit more here in just a moment, it's the reason the Walmart model's working in consumables. The average consumer, to the tune of 100 million customers a week, they're doing something right. Doesn't believe there's any difference. And the moment I believe there's no difference, what's my driver? Give me the cheap one. There's no difference. I can get that over there. Might as well go over there. That's exactly what that's about. There's no question in my mind that that's what's driving that business. So, you know, you think about some, some examples, it just, you know, what's, what's value. But I just want to ask you to think about your business in context of, of what you see there on the screen with the value pyramid. You think about what it is that you do. You've got two things, right? You've got the what. That's the product side of things. That's, that's the services, all those kind of issues that you bring to bear. But you've also got the how. That's the care and the time and the delivery and the professionalism and, frankly, the artistry that we talked about this morning that comes with this. I'm not just buying floor covering. The moment you get in that game, guess what? Hard to differentiate, and all of a sudden you start looking like everybody else. So you think about all of those things, but then look at the last one that kind of overarches all of it, and that is image. Who are you? What's your kind of business? How do I perceive you know and do what it is that you do? What kind of image are you bringing to bear on this market? How do you play in this market? It really becomes the issue. So let me just begin to wind down here. And I've got, a, I've got some uh, images here I want to ask you about here in a moment and ask you to participate and think about how value is provided by each of these folks. But, but I just make these comments as we begin to wind down. Seven key things I want to make a comment to you as I observe consumers and sellers um, about value. First of all, um, it's perception dependent. Okay, what's important to one is absolutely not important to another. It is about my perception of what it is like to have that in my house, as an example. It's more than price. Would you agree? It's absolutely more than price. Everyone in this room has made some kind of value choice, probably about more than price. I know, I mentioned golf, I'll just go back to that. I know 25 handicappers who buy Pro V1s. They're just going to lose five dollar golf balls is all that's going to happen there okay they will just go out of bounds further okay it is amazing to me right but well you know I play, play a title this pro v1 on the tour it's the number one golf ball so i'm going to use it you know really what you maybe ought to do is spend money on a lesson i'm just saying okay Maybe we ought to try to keep one in the fairway just one time in this 18 holes, right? It's more than price. Salespeople responsible for uncovering it. That goes back to the question comment. I absolutely believe it as firmly as I'm standing here. If I had a chance to work with your sales team, that is where we would spend our time. We have got to get better at making sure that we are truly understanding and uncovering what's important to that customer. Here's the thing, though. Everybody does value something. Remember, we talked about the three types of buyers, price, business, and, e price, business, and relationship. Right? Everybody values something. It just may not be something we like. It may not be something that we provide in our business. Real hard to be everything to everybody. And I know some of us uh, have, have run into that. Right? It's always changing. It's relative. It's always relative to something else. I can't, as a consumer, turn my mind off to something else that I've seen. I've seen it in somebody else's place of business. I've seen it from a, from a competitor. I, I've seen it in another manufacturer. I can't turn my mind off from that. It's a relative phenomenon as, as we play this out. And at the end of the day, final comment I'll make is this about price, and that is you gotta, it's got to be as much influenced by value at least as much as it is by cost. 
I'll go back to one more time. Your industry, we already had it brought up here this morning, is absolutely in the throes of you've got a whole group of folks out there on the supplier end that are telling folks, hey, it's just floor covering. And the more that message is out there, and it's not special, and it's not differentiated, and it's not unique, the harder it is to get folks to understand that indeed a premium goes along with it. It's everyone in this room's job to make sure that that doesn't happen. So to, to leave you, to wind down, I got just some, uh, some schematics here of logos on the, uh, on the screen. And I just wanted to ask you all, and just, we'll just shout them out here a little bit. Um, this is Apple, a little hard to see. Michelin, obviously, Walmart, Beamer, FedEx, and Starbucks. You know, think about when you see those logos, how would you respond? How's value, you know, what do they do to provide value? So let's go to Apple. What, what are they doing to provide value in, in, to their customers? Innovation, right? Perceived cool, someone said. What else? Any others? Your support, yeah, okay. What else? Any others? Easy to use. Yeah, again, made it very, very easy to use and you know, kind of goes along with the cool thing. No question about it. And at least right now are absolutely perceived as innovation, right? Something new, different that they're constantly bringing to the market. What about these guys? How's value provided by Michelin? Long lasting, what else? Safety. Safety. Let me just ask you all for a moment. I know we're not all in the ad game in the room. Can you imagine being the person, the guy or the gal, that went into the marketing chief at Michelin and said, you know, I've got a heck of an idea for you. You sell tires, right? We're going to put a baby in the center of the tire. People love it. Can you imagine being the first person? Come up? Let me ask you. Before you saw the baby in the Michelin tire, how many of you really thought of your tires as a safety device? I've got to be honest with you, never really given it much thought. But they've kind of convinced me I ought to care. Kind of interesting. Never really thought of the tire as a safety tool. But, but guess what? They've kind of positioned that it has that way. And then certainly long-lasting higher end. Um, we're going to come back to these guys. What about Beamer? Luxury. Luxury. What else? Quality. Quality. Reliability. Reliability. What's that? Driving experience. Driving experience. Security. Comfort. Comfort. Design. Design. High end, prestige. prestige. I was going to say, mostly my neighbor ain't got one, is pretty much what that one's about, right? I mean, image, no question about it. People forget that that actually represents a propeller that was on the front end of a Messerschmitt in World War II. People kind of forget that part of the heritage there as you, as you look at that. Let's go to FedEx. What do they do? Broken tile. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. We'll just go on. Okay, broken tile, all right? Yeah, absolutely. But again, what did they do? One thing they do, we've got to give them credit, and hopefully they don't break it too often, but certainly they do, right? We, we've got to give them a little credit, right? They took a commodity and turned it into something that we all thought we needed. Mail. Kind of amazing, right? Took mail. And now we pay $25,000. Right? Oh, yeah, and like it. Yeah, you know, pay a lot of money and like it. And the great thing about them is, you know, one of the great values is they can always tell you where your package is. It's not necessarily in the right place, but they know where the heck it is, right? <laughs> absolutely, right? Um, let's go to these guys. What have they done? Starbucks. They took a $2 cup of coffee and sold it for five. Yeah, so they, they absolutely upsold. If anybody ever did a great example of that, what else did they do? Yeah, great experience. In fact, in fact, you really, it's kind of, coffee is kind of secondary, right? Um, I mean, you know, original music, um, soft leather care, chairs and couches in some of them. Um, it had, before it was cool, free Wi-Fi. I have a sales manager from one of our clients, and this was a dozen years ago. Hey, where are you at? Well, I'm at a, I'm at a uh, Starbucks because they had free internet. I mean, you could actually get, get on Wi-Fi. Now it's not such a big deal with air cards and all those kind of things. Everybody's got it, but they did at first. But mostly at the end of the day, what is it? It's an experience, right, as, as much as anything. And again, maybe a little prestige there, at least in some people's mind. Now let's go back to these guys. How's value provided right there? Wally World. Again, by the way, and we're, we'll talk about this, but you're never going to find me at least finding fault with someone who's found a way to figure it out how to attract 100 million customers a week. They're doing something right. So what do they do? How do they provide value? Perception of cheap, which by the way is a brilliant thing. Decent products. For the most part, their products will do what they say they'll do on the package, right? What else do they do? One-stop shopping. One shopping. Yep, yep. You can get your lawnmower and your meat at the exact same place. <laughs> Not me personally, but some people think that's okay. What else? What else do they do? Anything else? 
They basically have banked on the fact that most consumers, no, not most consumers, but a significant segment of the marketplace has said there ain't any difference in most consumables. There's no difference, and because there's no difference, golly, you might as well buy it at the place that has no service other than they'll take it back with no questions asked. Okay, don't ever, I hope, you don't ever go in there needing a lot of help. Would that be a fair statement? Okay, but that isn't their stick. You do understand. They would, I, I, I travel around this great country of ours all the, and Canada, okay, <laughs> all the time, and it's amazing the number of places I go, and you know, people go, oh, Walmart came in town and ran all the small businesses out of town. And pardon my language, but frankly, folks, that is absolute, well, I'll just say BS. It's never been true. It will never be true. Who decided that the small business ought to go away? Customers, every time. People have decided to drive 30 miles to the county seat to save a third of a penny on a 16-penny nail. But you know who else was at fault? That small business in the local town that used to be there. Because they did a horrible job of helping people understand and realize the value that they brought to them. And, and, and we joked about it a little bit, but I'm really serious. You all need to get really, really good at singing it as loud as you can from as high a mountaintop as you possibly can, how good we are, how different we are, and why you need to do business here. No one else will sing that song for you. And if your sales team's not singing it, get you a new one. I can't say that loudly enough and strongly enough. It's absolutely critical. Because if you don't, people will take the path of least resistance. And that's those guys right there, at least in, in a broad context, as we think about what's going on in the marketplace.